In the previous episode, we made a simple character controller using Unity's new input system. In this video, I'll show you how to make a simple camera follow script so the camera can follow the player around the map. So to start off, let's make a script down here in the scripts folder. Right click, create C sharp script, and we are going to call it camera follow. So let's just double click that. So this is our camera follow script, and we are going to remove these two using declarations at the top since we're not going to be using those namespaces. All we need is the Unity engine. And so I'm going to erase these comments here. And so the first thing we want to do is get a reference to our player so our camera can follow it. So we want to have a private transform target. So once again, the transform tells you the position and rotation in space. So we're going to point our target to our player. And to do that in front, we are going to put serialize field so we can access this private variable in our inspector and we can just assign our player to it. So to show you what I mean, let's go to our main camera and we are going to add in that camera follow script. And then as you can see, now we have that target option. And so all we're going to do is drag the player onto that target. And so now that's going to be the target that the camera will be following. So back to our script, we're not going to need any of these functions. So let's erase them for now. And we're going to use a Unity built-in function called late update. And the late update is called after all the other updates. And we want to do this in late update because since our player is moving in the normal update function, we want all the player actions to be completed and then the camera to take all those player actions into account. Okay, cool. So now we're going to need a offset. So basically how far away the camera is from the player. And to do that, we are going to make a serialize field and then private vector three offset. And we'll set that in the inspector. And then one more thing that we will need is a private vector three velocity. And I'm just going to equal it to vector 3.0 for now. So that's just a 0, 0, 0 vector 3. And we're going to need this because we're going to use a Unity built in function called smooth damp. And if we look at the documentation, smooth damp gradually changes the value toward a desired goal over time. And I've used this smooth damp in a project that I was doing, and I really like the feel of it. And it's pretty simple to use. So let's implement that. So in our late update, we need our desired position. So vector three, desired position. And this is the position we want the camera to be in. And so this is really simple. All we have to do is get our target dot position. So this is the position of our player at that current frame. And then all we're gonna do is add in that offset. And so Unity has built-in functions to let us add two vectors together and have a vector as an output, which is really nice. And then all we have to do is set the transform.position of the camera. So this will be the position of the camera. And we are going to equal it to vector3.smoothdamp. So this is the function that Unity uses. And then we have to pass in. If you hover over it, it says we need the current vector3 and we need the target vector3. So our current vector3 is our current transform.position. And then we want to go to our desired position. So if we're not in our desired position, then move towards it. And now when you hover over the smooth damp, you see we need a reference to a current velocity. And what the reference does is that it will return to us the current velocity of the camera. So let's put ref velocity. And so we're not actually, we don't actually have to set this to anything, what it will do is return to us the velocity that it's calculating with this smooth damp. And we just need that as a parameter for the function. And so finally, we need our smooth time. And the smooth time approximates the time it will take to reach the target. So if you make it faster, then it will reach the desired position faster. And we can actually make another variable for this, and we can put serialize field, private float, smooth speed equals, I found 0.125 to be a good number. And then we have to add, add F at the end because it is a float. And in C sharp, you have to add an F to the end if you want that float value. 
And so another cool thing that you can do in the inspector, and I'll show you right now, is that we can add a range to this parameter. So as you can see, we added a serialized field here. We can also add in a range. So if we put brackets and then we put range, and we can put the range we want it to stay within. So we can do 0.01f to 1f. So that, those are going to be the values that you can select for the smooth speed inside the inspector. And so now all we have to do is copy that smooth speed and paste it inside of the smooth damp function. And we're done. So save that file. And then now in our inspector in the camera follow script, you can see our smooth speed. We can't set it less than 0 0.01 and we can't set it more than one. So that's a really nice feature that Unity provides the range for the slider. So I'm going to set that back to 0.125. And another good offset that I found is 0, 0.61 and negative 1.5. And so what this means, it's going to be offset 0 meters in the x axis. It's going to be offset 0 0.64 meters in the y axis. And it's going to be offset negative 1.5 meters in the z axis. And so you can tell the z-axis is the blue arrow, so it's forward. So we do want it to be offset backwards from the actual image. So that's why it's negative. And then our y, it's going to be a little higher, which is our green arrow. And we want to make sure it's not really down below so we don't see that blue part. So now if we click play, as you can see, our character is moving and the camera is moving along with it. If we jump, the camera also jumps with it. And we can actually move the offset up and see how that looks. So 2.25 seems to be a better value. So let's stop clicking play and let's set that value to 2.25 for the Y in the offset. And so you notice that if you jump, you can actually see the top. And so we want to make the background follow the camera because if we don't and we just have a bunch of tiles um, or images of the background, then it's going to be really optimization unfriendly. So all we have to do in that case, so I'm going to make, I'm going to drag the three background game objects from the environment out into the hierarchy. And then I'm going to make an empty game object and I'm going to rename it background. And then I will just drag those three backgrounds into that background. And that's just basically to organize it. So the background has its own little section in the hierarchy. And so all we're going to have to do is drag that background as a child to the main camera. So you click the background and then you hover over the main camera and you let go. And so now the background is a child of the main camera. And so the background will now move with the main camera, which is pretty cool. So that's the video. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. In the next video, we'll we, we will be doing our animations. So with the sprite sheets that come with the asset pack we downloaded, we will be getting those sprites and making an animation. And then in our code, when we're jumping, we're, we are going to put the jumping animation. And when we're running, we're going to put our running animation. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to subscribe and like. And see you in the next video.